I should have a witty, funny, catchy thing to say here, but it's been, to say the very least, it's been a very weird couple of days for wrestling, but I'm going to try and get over that slightly. We're still here to talk about NXT, so, you know, we do the let's talk about it, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, the energy's different today, the, uh, the, the, the feeling around wrestling is different today, so I'm gonna give you an NXT, let's talk about it, but it's more like, alright, let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pals, Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your NXT review for April 14th, 2020. How we doing, guys? <laughs> I don't, uh... As I say, the energy is a little bit different tonight. I am still going to go through the show. The show was still really good. There's a lot of uh, relatively exciting things to talk about. It's hard to get excited with the way some of the world is right now. So I do want to start off... I want to start off, anyway, uh, all the videos that I do with you guys, just sort of generally putting it out there. Uh, the world's kind of shit right now. Uh, I'd be lying... If I said it wasn't getting to me from time to time, I'm lucky enough that I work in a in an essential industry. I don't talk too much about work on here for obvious reasons, but I do work in an essential industry. So I am going to work every day. So, you know, as opposed to just looking at these four walls, I'm going over there and looking at a whole different set of four walls. And then I'm coming back here and talking, uh, you know, talking to these four walls. So, uh... I'm not going as crazy as I could be. I know some of you are, um... If you're choosing to make what I do here on YouTube part of your distraction or whatever, uh, I'm happy to do that for you. In that vein, I want to thank anybody that came out to the live stream on Tuesday. Uh, Kristen and I, after lots and lots of teasing and prodding and, uh, you know, schedules aligning and whatever, uh, Kristen and I, uh, Black Hat Feline, are back to doing movie reviews. Um, it's going to be called The Flicks Fix because I'm really awesome at coming up with really lame names for, for video series. Uh, obviously right now there's no theaters open, so we're not seeing anything new. I mean, if you had asked me two, three months ago, I would say if we ever did video content again, the first thing we would probably do would be Black Widow. But right now, we don't, so right now it's just a case of pull something off of our shelves, we both watch it, and we talk about it. So what's going on immediately is we are doing the Godzilla trilogy. So we did the Godzilla from 2014 this past Tuesday, we will do Skull Island, we will do King of the Monsters. After that, we are moving on to the old Sigourney Weaver Alien Trilogy, if you are interested in that at all. I can't get, really give you a timeline, because it is, again, a sense of uh, when schedules align and all that sort of thing, but it was a lot of fun. I do... I do want to thank those of you that came out and uh, either took place or took part in the chat, or those of you that were out there noticing that I was trying to do something a little different, a little something not wrestling related on the channel and trying to uh, share the video around. I do appreciate that as well. Uh, I want to send another quick shout out to uh, my good buddy and sometimes co-host Jake DeMarco, seeing as he's my NXT guy. This is an NXT review. He's still uh, dealing with some of his stuff and I'm not going to come up here and tell a whole bunch of his business, but I just want to uh, look into this camera, talk to my buddy uh, across the border, across the... Uh, internet waves and uh, just say, hey man, uh, you're tackling a lot and uh, everybody here from this channel is behind you. We hope you're you're getting better rather than worse. You're a good dude and we need you here with me to make sense of what's going on in NXT right now. Do we not? Speaking of which, uh, we're coming off of uh, that really weird WrestleMania that happened and what's the one thing that happens after WrestleMania on a normal year? We get all the call-ups and we sort of do the, you know, rest in peace for all of our NXT favorites that are going up to the main roster. Didn't really happen this year, because there weren't a whole lot of call-ups, but uh, Bianca Belair went up to Monday Night Raw, which we talked about last week, and the Forgotten Sons went to SmackDown. And you know what? I have the feeling that the Forgotten Sons are going to go the um, Braun Strowman, Baron Corbin, Alexa Bliss route of possibly doing better on that mainstream 
stage than on NXT where the more critical fans are. So I think that's a good thing. I, I didn't enjoy talking about them in NXT because they didn't do really much in NXT. And if they're on SmackDown or Raw, I'm, I, I don't review <laughs> SmackDown or Raw. So it's a bit of a selfish way to look at it. And Bianca Belair, I, I've said to death what I think about Bianca Belair. I mean, right now she she's making her husband and his tag team partner look like a bitch on Raw. But that's not my problem, because I don't have to talk about it here. Uh, eventually, we'll have to talk about money in the bank, and that's an entirely other conversation. But yeah, we didn't really lose anybody that I was sorry to lose. Um, as far as call-ups go, as far as the wrestling world in the WWE Universe, I hate that term, but we're going to have to use it in this case, um, there was a bit of a purge today. And I've been trying to keep up on the news, I've been trying to keep up on, on social media and on the dirt sheets or whatever. I will miss some names, I will have I've missed a couple of announcements here or there, but they let a lot of people go, either let them leave, released them, uh, terminated their contracts, whatever the terminology is. There's a lot of backstage personnel that I'm not familiar with, so I'm not going to come up here and pretend that I am and talk about that, but... At the last check, which was right before I started watching NXT tonight, we lost Deanna Perrazzo, which is a huge bummer, No Way Jose, uh, Leo Rush, um, which is a real shame because he was the one, he was the star that they used to rebrand that Cruiserweight Championship into what it is now, which is a huge thing. Drake Maverick, I'm going to sound like a dick, but they've never given us a reason to care about Drake Maverick, but I saw... If you want to know how how shitty it is out there right now, go go and check out Drake Maverick's Instagram, Twitter, whatever, the video that he put up right after he got the news that he was being released. And unless you are an absolute android, it will it will break your heart. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, Kurt Angle, who was apparently doing a lot backstage that I wasn't familiar with, Rusev, which I know was going to bum a lot of people out, Zack Ryder, what do you want me to say? Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. I I don't know what to think about that. Now, now they were never given their due as just a tag team, but they were they were attached to AJ Styles, which is a pretty big deal. They were involved in the Boneyard match, which in this weird era of wrestling was one of the highlights of WrestleMania. They are a great team. When they first came on board, their rivalry with the Usos was pretty damn good, and they just they feel like a presence and they're and they're funny. Like they're they're annoying twerps, but they're funny. They're they're a very very dilute the OC in general. I mean, I have to include AJ Styles in this in this statement, but they are a really really lame sort of main roster WWE equivalent to the Undisputed Era, aren't they? Now Undisputed Era obviously has a lot more going for them and a lot more backing behind them, and a lot more push behind them because they all had titles up until a little while ago. But Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, I don't know, man. Heath Slater. <sighs> What do you want me to say? Um, Eric Young, uh, Eric Rowan. I would have loved to see them do more with Eric Young because I think Eric Young's hilarious. Go back to his his TNA days. Um, he was really good. Rowan, I mean, he's playing with the toy, toy spider, isn't he? Sarah Logan is a huge, huge bummer for me because I... Maybe I'm delusional. I saw a lot in Sarah Logan that never, ever, ever got tapped into, which is a bummer. Referee Mike Chioda who's apparently been in WWE for, like, 30 years. That's, I don't know, Mike and Maria Kanellis, who, like, wanted to leave, decided to come back, wanted to leave, decided to come back. Maria got pregnant. Mike went to 205 Live and then disappeared again. I really don't know what to say. EC3 is probably thanking God that he's not taking up space in catering anymore, so I don't know what you want me to say about that. Aiden English, I don't know what to say about either. He hasn't wrestled on on any TV that I've been watching in ages. I know he was doing commentary for 205 Live at one point. Was that still a thing? I'm not sure. And Primo and Epico are those guys that you always hear about that, that you always hear about and the reaction is, oh my god, they're still there? Like other guys on here, the, uh, the Kurt Hawkins, the Zack Riders, the... Uh, the Mike Kanellis, the EC3 specifically, like, we know they're there. We know they're taking up space in catering. Primo and Epico are, like, genuinely, I I did not know, or I never really knew if they were still there or not. But that's a lot of people. And, I mean, I know there's been a lot of people in the back. There's a lot of, uh, of backstage staff and writing staff or whatever that have sort of been told, like, go home for now. There might be something for you later. That's, that's fucking huge, man.
I'm sure there's more. I'm sure the rumors were that there were they were holding off on letting some NXT people go until after the NXT taping tonight, which is fucking terrible, by the way. But um, I don't know what to say. Uh, about half of that list is is people that I really wanted to see something from. I won't pretend that I I am an advocate for every single person on that list because there's a, there's some people on that list that either for my own reasons or the way WWE treated them I never I never personally gave a crap about as as characters on my TV I have to be specific here uh, as as human beings that are all stuck in this shitty situation that we are all in and apparently you're not allowed to say COVID-19 or coronavirus on your videos but I'm not monetized so YouTube can fuck off um, <sighs> I don't know, as human beings, you, you don't want to see this happen to anybody. Uh, as cynical human beings, you want to do the whole, ah, I bet they show up in TNA, or I bet they show up in AEW or Impact, or I bet they'll show up at ROH, or they'll show up on the, what is the, what's the studio show, the uh, NWA or whatever. But, I mean, I guess, like, look at something like a Brody Lee, or a, who's the other big murder hawk? fucker on AEW. I'm not even making fun of AEW at this point. I just can't think of the guy's name. Um, but also the Revival was let go not too long ago. No, that was that was by their request. They'd been waiting for that for a long time. But I mean, just... there. I feel like there should be so much to say when, but really all I do is I look at this list that's on my screen right now and I just think, damn. I just think, damn. And when you think... A couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, the criticism of WWE was they weren't letting anybody go. There were people being paid to just sit at home on their couch. Now there's a bunch of people that are going to go home and sit on their couch and not get paid. So I don't, I don't know. But now that I've rambled through that and, and probably made a mess of it, we do have to go through and we do have to do the other news things that are affecting T or not TNA. I'm not talking about TNA. I'm talking about NXT. Here we go. You know what it is, I've been talking to several people today about the TNT title in, in AEW and what I think of that and what I, and more importantly, what I don't think of that. But uh, apparently on the bump, uh, William Regal was back on there announcing that Will, uh, that uh, Matt Riddle needs to find himself a different partner to hold the tag team t titles with. Not only that, he's going to be defending them tonight against the Undisputed Era. So, that's a bit shit. Last week they talked about there's going to be a cruiserweight an interim NXT Cruiserweight Championship tournament for an interim NXT Cruiserweight Champion. But it's not going to be a typical, like, single el elimination bracket thing. It's going to be a round robin. Apparently, like, everybody and their mother is saying this is how the G1 runs. I don't watch the G1. The if this surprises you at this point, you really haven't been paying attention. But in Block A, there's Kushida, Drake Maverick, Tony Nese, Jake Atlas. In Block B, there is uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott, El Hero del Fantisma. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Tazawa and Gallagher. Now, appar apparently, Akira Tazawa is just Tazawa now. I, I don't know. And apparently how it's going to work, each block each uh, each member of each block is going to face the entire block once, and then whoever has the highest score out of all of them goes on and faces the the winner from the other block. That's that's an interesting. That's I'm I'm not going to lie. It's not new, but that's relatively new to me. If you want my my initial thoughts right now, I think the uh, the final is going to be Swerve and Kushida. I think Kushida is going to win. I think their hope is when all this bullshit is done and over with and we can have, actually have a wrestling crowd again, I think the champion versus champion match that they're going to want is Kushida versus Jordan Devlin. But I don't know. Jordan Devlin, kayfabe-wise, is sitting over in Ireland pissed off that somebody else is going to get to fight for his title and they're only a paper champion. And Roddy Roddy Ross. So Devlin is a champion stuck over on the other side of the world with nothing to do. Pete Dunn is a champion over on the other side of the world, stuck with nothing to do. I really do feel bad, and yeah, we're going to check off a little bit of Spaz Phoenix Bingo. Thanks to the Destiny Wrestling shows just up the, here, up the road here in Mississauga, I have had a chance to meet Pete Dunn, and I have had a chance to meet Jordan Devlin, and they're both really cool dudes, so I really feel for their situation at the moment. But this is where we're at. We're going to have a new tag team champion 
tonight we're going to start the Cruiserweight Round Robin Tournament Interim NXT, whatever you want to call it. We don't have Bianca Belair or the Forgotten Sons anymore, and in general, WWE just doesn't have a lot of people that they had yesterday or the day before or whatever. We're back in the Performance Center and we're back to doing live shows. Now, I could say a lot about the fact that we're back to doing live shows because the TV networks wouldn't accept taped material, which is weird, and I don't know enough about how entertainment uh, deals like that work. I won't pretend that I do. I, I just, I to me, it's weird. Um, if you watch a tape of a show, if I turn on a wrestling show on that TV, right over there, I mean, you can't see it because it's not in the frame, but whatever, my TV's right over there. Literally, I watch NXT there, I come in and I talk to you guys here. If you turn on that TV and wrestling is on versus if I put a tape in and push play and then bring you into the room and say, look, there's some wrestling. There's really no difference other than maybe the way it's cut. Maybe something might be edited. Maybe somebody's, you know, profanity might be cut out or whatever. I, I really don't, I really don't get it. People say you can, oh, you can always tell when a show is live. Um, if you've got TiVo and you pause your television for even five seconds, you're technically not watching live TV anymore. So fuck off with that shit. The thing is weird. Um, they tried to tape as much as they could ahead of time because they thought they were going to be locked out of the Performance Center and locked out of Full Sail because there's a lockdown in Florida. And then the announcement came from the government of Florida, the, uh, the governor of Florida, you know, American politics. Again, not something I'm incredibly familiar with other than, you know, your president is super not popular. Uh, I, I laugh because I'm a terrible person, and, and I laugh because I like having wrestling to watch, even if it's weird and in front of a dead crowd, it's a distraction, and that's what we need in these times. I, I laughed way more than I should have when I read the news. I thought it was like something from The Onion or something from Kayfabe News or or some, some spoof or whatever, that WWE and NXT, by extension, has been listed by the government of Florida as an essential service and therefore is allowed to stay operational. Now, that's, that's hilarious. And me being an asshole, I kind of want to laugh because we know Dana White tried to have UFC Island and that kind of failed, did it not? Um, but that's also relatively terrifying. Uh, I'm in a weird spot with all this, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um... Any argument that anybody wants to give me as to why WWE should shut down tomorrow, send everybody home, keep everybody safe, I cannot argue with any single thing that anybody's going to say about that. If you ask me right now, should they be doing shows right now, I'm going to tell you no. But I will say in 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 a world where, we're in, where everything's on pause right now and there's nothing really else in a, in a live capacity, I mean, I have a huge fucking movie collection. Um, you know, Netflix is a thing. All the other streaming services are offering incredible discount. I think even Shutter is is offering a discount. I got Disney Plus because I'm a nerd. Of course, I got Disney Plus. Uh, but as far as anything that's happening live, the only thing that's going on right now is WWE. And if I said that, you know, for a couple hours, every couple of days, I'm not thankful in some small way. Maybe not necessarily thankful to the company, but thankful for the wrestlers, thankful for the fact that I still have cable uh, for that distraction for a couple hours, I'd be lying. So, should it be happening? No, obviously not. Uh, obviously, safety and logic would dictate everybody should go home, because everybody should go home, except me, because I work in an essential service. Um, everybody, everybody that can go home and, and can stay home should stay home, but at the same time, as long as it's on my TV, I'm going to soak up as much of it as, there, as, as I can, and that's just as honest as I can be. It's uh, it's a very weird time. It's a very shitty time, and pretending that this crap is not shitty and terrifying, and uh, all the other things that it is frustrating, maddening, um, upsetting. Pretending that it's not all those things, and like m even for a minute pretending that it's not, pretending that we can carry on day to day, is exhausting. So it's why I've said to you guys in the past couple of videos, uh, everybody needs somebody to vent to. Uh, find somebody to vent to. The wrestling community on Twitter, even as shitty as we are, are being relatively cool to each other right now, except for the, the outliers. Um, there's people out there, and if nothing else, at SpazPhoenix1 
on Twitter, at Spaz Phoenix on Instagram. You need somebody to vent to and you can't find anybody else. You need a last resort. Uh, my DMs are open. So you want to shoot the shit about wrestling. You want to shoot the shit about how weird wrestling is with no crowd. You want to shoot the shit about how awkward the ring sounds when somebody hits it, when there's no other crowd there to absorb the noise. You want to talk about, hey, I, th I don't think they should have let this person go, but, you know, this person's... like. I don't, I don't want to be an asshole, but like I don't get how all these people get released and they bring back Nia Jax. I just don't. When when you want to talk about health and safety of your workers in a, in a time where we're worried about health and safety, and you bring back the person that put people on the shelf in the teens with her carelessness, and then let all these people go. Um, I don't know. That's a frustration of mine. Everybody's got their frustrations. If you don't talk to me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not any kind of expert, but you can talk to me. You can talk. I know you can talk to some of the co-hosts that I have on this show. Uh, Kristen and I spoke about it in a uh, couple of videos ago. I know she's relatively on the same wavelength as I am. Shout out to her. Uh, but just in in general, like people are pretty good out there. So talk to somebody. I'm I, I'm going to say it again for the third or fourth or fifth time. I'm no expert, but I know that talking to somebody is better than talking to nobody. At Spaz Phoenix One, at Spaz Phoenix on Instagram. Hit it up if you want. Talk to me. Tell me what you're liking. Tell me what you love about this show. If you're on the other side of the fence, tell me what you liked about Dynamite. I haven't watched it yet. I know Moxley's got a match. It's fine. They've got a tournament for a belt that exists for reasons. We've got a tournament for a belt that exists because the actual champion is trapped in Ireland by the current global situation. COVID-19, Corona, YouTube, fuck off. Let's get into this week's show. This week's show, we're back in full sale because NXT is an essential service. But that do that means we do not get the voiceover of Moro Ronaldo like we did last week. We're back to having Byron Saxton and Tom Phillips. And that just makes me cry a little bit. We get a... A rundown of last week, but a rundown of last week is basically a rundown of two matches. It's the latter match that Io Shirai won, which was great, lacking a crowd, obviously, but Io Shirai will be a great match for Charlotte Flair at some point. We're going to talk about Charlotte Flair later on and who else she might be looking at, but Io Shirai is technically the number one contender. Uh, the Gargano, Ciampa, one last beat. I gotta say, I gotta say, I know it wasn't for everybody. Uh, it was another cinematic match. I know there's some people that are just sick of Ciampa Gargano. I think that, you know, they've been playing out to death. I know a lot of people don't buy the Gargano heel turn. They definitely don't buy the Candice LeRae heel turn. Um, I, I knew that match wasn't for everybody. I did not. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm talking about people that I watch on a regular on a regular basis. I did not expect the backlash that One Last Beat got. There have been far worse conceptual matches the Wyatt compound match the um you know the match that Randy Orton and Wyatt had at WrestleMania where they projected the bugs on the ring the um what was it when uh the House of Horrors match the uh the New Day versus the Wyatt family um even if you want to look at something really wacky from back in the day like Rock and Mankind now Rock and Mankind are great they, the charisma they have is great. They make anything work. But somebody objectively looking at that empty arena match where he pins them with the forklift, it, it's relatively ridiculous. Now that compared to a heel turn on top of a heel turn with a little bit of story, a, a lot of storytelling. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't get the hate for it. I, I know it was very divisive. I know it was very like, it's going to be your thing or it's not going to be your thing. I don't get the the venomous reaction that that match got. I'm not going to lie. But we start off the show this week with the reaffirmation that we are going forward with the Finn Balor-Walter story. And I don't really know why. I don't really know how, because I'm assuming that Walter is, is stuck over... He's the UK champ. I'm sure he's either doing UK things or he's at home with his belt in the fridge, CM Punk style. But uh, this week we got Fabian Eichner representing Walter. He's got Marcel Barthel in his corner, and they're both, or sorry, Fabian's taking on Finn Balor, Marcel Barthel's in the corner. Now, this is really weird because for me, I like Finn Balor. Obviously, the Finn Balor heel turn is great. He's a heel character going against a heel faction, which is a weird dynamic. Fabian Eichner, I remember being in the Cruiserweight Classic, uh, people saying that he had lost all kinds of weight to be in the Cruiserweight classic and I didn't think anything of him at the time and Marcel Barthel I saw in person for the first time I think taking on Ty Dillinger going back that far at a, at a NXT house show 
before he ever actually debuted on TV. So to see these guys both where they are now, I mean, alongside Walter and, and uh, Alexander Wolf and all that, is kind of cool. Now you put them in a ring up against Finn Balor and you got these guys and then you got the star that is Finn Balor and that's weird. But collar and elbow tie up and a side headlock to start the takeover by Balor. Arm drag armbar combination by Fabian. A figure four headlock by Balor. Side headlock by Fabian. A sing single leg, sorry, a single arm back suplex. He sort of grabs him by one arm and chucks him instead of getting him by the waist, which is it's just weird. Not something I've ever seen before. Suicide style missile drop kick by Balor sends us into the commercial break. I will say. It's a blessing and a curse that this is going on the way it is because USA Network, which I have a shitty, shitty stream of, isn't trying to do the picture in picture during the commercial anymore, which A, means I'm we're missing a bit, but B, it keeps me... There's mosquitoes or something going around here. I don't like it. Uh, it keeps me from trying to look in this little box that's really not big enough for me to take any, any notes or anything like that from. So I just say commercial we come back and there's a rear chin lock by Balor, an arm drag a back elbow a tilt a whirl backbreaker by fabian working over the back into the into the turnbuckle into the corner spears into the Fab fabian's just hitting them with chops and spears and and pillar to post just pillar to post is what he's doing to him uh body shots by Balor, lariat by fabian there's a double stomp by Balor, sling blade by Balor, one arm toss bomb by fabian he does he gets him up in sort of like this toss power bomb position and just drives him down with one hand if you don't like anything else about fabian eichner the guy is deceptively deceptively strong uh i would compare him to a tyler Bate in that regard although tyler Bate is is that on, on a higher level because he's a bigger star and he's been doing it longer and he knows what he's doing but fabian eichner in that regard is very much very explosive is what i'll say Fabian eats the steps on the outside and a sling blade by Balor on the floor. There's a shotgun drop kick to Barthel, who tries to get involved. He gets shotgun drop kicked into the guardrail, which is weird. Since there's no crowd there, I said this last week. I said this last week. There shouldn't be a guardrail anymore because the guardrail is there to protect the crowd. There's no crowd, so the guardrail being there reminds us that there's no crowd. But also, the dead space around the ring during the Gargano Champa match last week showed us how cool it is to have a much more open space around the ring. Also, I don't think they're linking I don't think they're linking the sections of that guardrail together anymore because he just sort of hit the rail and it went and and it was very for something that probably hurts because it looks a bit awkward, it just it just looked very anticlimactic. So I don't see the point. You link them together and then you throw somebody into them and then you get the sound of the metal hitting itself because it's not a tight seal between those sections. This is a very minor thing. These are the things that I'm thinking about right now. But back in the ring you got Balor, you got a drop kick, sorry, you got a shotgun drop kick, you got a coup de grace, you got a 619, and you have an obvious win for Balor. But I will say, Fabian Eigner, like I said, take him back to the days of the Cruiserweight Classic, I didn't think much of him at all, because his only story was he lost a bunch of weight to be in the Cruiserweight Classic. And that, in and of itself, from a discipline standpoint, is great. From a character building point, it's not that interesting. I'm sorry. So... Great in this match. Marcel Barthel did his thing on the outside, took the little weird bump into the rail. Not having Walter there at all does hurt. Knowing in advance, because of how the real world is, that Walter isn't there, takes out the idea that he might be there. Now, I'm going to use this as an, as an example. Like, somebody that's about to face Adam Cole. Uh, who was it? Um, Velveteen Dream had to face Bobby Fish. It was either the last week or the week before. And the and the specter or the idea being that even though Adam Cole's not there, Fish is there as his proxy. He could be there at any minute to make an attack. Now, we pretty much logically know that Walter's not there because of how the world is. So that specter is gone. So you've got a couple of mid-carders taking on Finn Balor, who won a major title at a major Big Four WWE pay-per-view. Who's going to win this match? That being said, that that uh, the, that inability to put your suspension of disbelief in there aside, this was still a great match. It was a, it was a decent showcase for Fabian Eichner, and it was just an, uh, an excuse for us to show what, what Finn Balor can do. It was good. We, show, we showed a replay of, uh, what's her name? Raquel Gonzalez debuting at the pay-per-view and costing Tegan Knox the street fight against Dakota Kai. That was a bummer. Don't keep showing me that because the the debut of Raquel Gonzalez was went over like a wet fart in church 
over what was, until that point, a really surprisingly good match. Kai versus Knox, the second women's match at that particular takeover, was a match that I thought was going to be really good and went above what I thought it was going to be. So to have the, the simple debuting, look, I've got a partner and she's big, was really deflating. And, and it was really... I would have loved to see Dakota Kai just win that and, like, wreck her, but that's not what happened. And then we go to a pre-taped Rick... or Not Rick. Charlotte Flair interview. Now, they, they had been promoting on Monday that she was coming to NXT to wise some people up. And coming to NXT for Charlotte Flair means doing a pre-recorded interview that NXT can play during their show. Now, that bothers me, but I like that it bothers me because... You know, you you can build in all that little like the the fan annoyance with Charlotte Flair right off the bat. Oh, she's she's taken our NXT title, but she's not really NXT anymore. Look at her; she's just she's mailing it in. She's doing the whole rock via satellite thing. But that's good though. All those little things about it that piss you off. The fact that she has the belt at all and it pisses us all off is going to be good for whoever takes it up. Now, I hope Rhea Ripley is able to finish off what I think was a passport issue like an Australian passport issue and get back into the mix if not her if that's going to take a while because of the current global situation um Io Shirai for sure um I would love to be really really selfish and just say a fluke win by Shotzi Blackheart I really would but you know we're going to talk about what she's doing in a bit but she goes on and she cuts a very Charlotte Flair sit-down promo bragging about beating Ripley at Mania. She says she's going to dominate the past, the present, and the future. She went on for days listing her accomplishments, and so she should. Talked about, you know, beating the past, beating people like Natty, beating people like Nikki Bella, beating people like Paige. And she went on to say, hey, I beat Paige when Paige was the best wrestler WWE had, and now it's me. And then I got myself to a certain point where Trish Stratus wanted to come back and test her medal against me. I've beaten the rest of the horsewomen. I humbled Ronda Rousey. I beat Asuka's streak. Now, every time she says, I beat Asuka's streak, it's not as good as, as Brock Lesnar Undertaker. But I smile a little bit because there are people out there, probably friend, fans of, of New Japan or All Japan or, or whatever whatever promotions are out there in Japan, they they don't really care what you do until you beat one of theirs. And I'm not saying Japanese people. I'm saying the people that think that the, the, they're the hipsters of wrestling fans that are like if 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 they ever spent any time in Japan, they're they're now automatically good. I I don't know. It's I don't understand it because the people that we're talking about aren't bad. Asuka's not bad. Kyrie Sane's not bad. Io Shirai's not bad um, at all. But it's like. This swath of destruction that Charlotte cut, these people would let all that go, but mention that Char mention that Oscar streak, and they'll get really, really twitchy. Sidgwick, I'm looking at you, buddy. Moving on. She starts setting her sights on the new, the new uh, standard of the women's division in NXT, and for some random-ass reason, she said she wants Mia Yim first. I... I like Mia Yim. You guys know that. I think she's incredibly underrated. She had the one really bad match with Baszler at the show that I was at, and I'm not going to defend that in the slightest because it was weird. Uh, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae was the best match that night. But I, I do think Mia Yim is underrated. She do, She's another one of those ones like Alexa Bliss, like Nikki Cross, um, that people love to call a one because she's not a ten as far as an in-ring competitor. I don't think she's the best wrestler on the roster by far. I don't think she's terrible, but I, I won't. I won't lie to you. I won't say that she's the best. I will say that I like her. And I, I will say that the people out there, again, the wrestling hipsters out there, the smarks out there, will call her a one because she's not a ten. And that's terrible. So Charlotte, setting her sights on Mia Yim when she already knows who her first proper challenger is going to be, is going to be a bit weird. So Because she mentioned Io Shirai briefly before moving on to Mia Yim and, and sort of saying you know, Mr. Regal, I'm going to take out Mia Yim and then I'll take on whoever you want to give me. Well, whoever he wants to give you is, is Io Shirai. Io Shirai is the number one contender. Um, I don't think they're going to treat it like a Money in the Bank briefcase, even though it is a briefcase that she won in a basically a Money in the Bank match. But it was weird. But apparently at some point we're getting Charlotte Flair versus Mia Yim. And I, I'm not going to lie, I don't know about you guys, I don't mind that in the slightest. 
Aaliyah versus Zia Lee was a really weird squash for for Zia Lee. I don't really know what to say. Um, Aaliyah got some stuff in. My homegirl from Toronto is not getting any love. They've talked about her broken nose more than they've talked about anything she can do in the ring, and that's, that's backwards, is it not? And Zia Lee did a weird sort of downward spin kick thing for the win. But we started off two representatives from Group B in the NXT Interim Cruiserweight Championship Tournament. Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott taking on Tazawa. And I have to get used to not calling him Akira Tazawa because apparently he's just Tazawa now. But Swerve works the arm to start. There's a head scissor by Tazawa, a head scissor by Swerve because anything you can do, I can do better. Chops by both men, a right jab by Tazawa, a back elbow by Scott, drop kick by Tazawa, and stomps to the head and a choke. They trade some chops on the apron. There's a head scissor off the apron by Tazawa as we go into the commercial break. There's a backpack sleeper from Swerve when we come back from the commercial break, a cannonball off the apron by Tazawa. Now, I'm going to go on a tangent here. I'm going to do something that's not very popular. I'm going to tell all the people that just use bashing Jerry Lawler as their get-out-of-jail SJW free card can fuck off. Yeah, he made the wonton senton joke on thing. Now, you want to talk about... You want to talk about accepted offensive language in the WWE. Now, I'm not saying that any of these things offend me, but... There are three words, or three terms, that have become part of WWE terminology for, for ages now. Big Show's move is the WMD. WMDs literally kill people. Your current WWE champion that everybody's happy about and everybody feels bad for because he won his championship at WrestleMania in front of nobody, and rightfully so, he's great. His finisher is the claymore. A claymore is a mine, and they kill people. And I mean, the one move, especially in AEW, but NXT is guilty of it as well, that is overused more than a super kick, is a suicide dive. Now, if you're okay with WW WMDs, claymores, and suicide being regular terminology in WWE or any of the wrestling that you watch, and you want to say that you're offended by Jerry Lawler saying that he did a wonton senton, you can fuck off. Oh yes. Moving on. Top rope dropkick by Tozawa, head scissor by, head scissor into a tarantula by Tozawa, backpack dragon sleeper by Tozawa with a body scissor, a deadlift brain buster by Swerve, series of kicks by Tozawa, German suplex by Swerve, a mule kick by Tozawa, tornado, weird tornado kick and a falling senton by Tozawa gets the win. I thought Swerve had this in the bag because they've been giving him quite a push and Tozawa, while he is great, is sort of jobber to the stars and he's not technically on NXT, so I have a feeling that this is going to be Swerve's only loss and Tozawa's only win in the round robin. I could be very, very wrong. Like I say, I think the final of this is going to be Swerve versus Kushida, and I think it should be. Now, if we went through this, because I think Kushida's going to be the ultimate winner, I, I do, uh, you're not going to convince me otherwise unless he loses like every match, but I think you're going to get Kushida versus Jordan Devlin, champion versus champion for the undisputed NXT Cruiserweight Championship somewhere down the line. You could get that if they decide to push Tazawa. If you want to do a Tazawa versus Kushida main um, championship match at the end of this, I wouldn't mind that in the slightest, but it wouldn't really fit with the push, that the sort of on-again, off-again uh, push that they have been giving Swerve, and with the fact that Tazawa not being actually on the NXT roster sort of does harpoon your suspension of disbelief right through the throat. Um, really, really good match. Um, stuff from Tazawa that we don't see or we don't get enough of on the main roster. He's getting a chance to flesh it out here. Swerve just keeps keeps getting better. I mean, he was in he was in the mix with Angel Garza and Jordan Devlin and Travis Banks, the only Banks in WWE that matters, back at Worlds Collide, was he not? And he showed what he could do. Then I, I really, I, if he's not going to be moving forward in this, he should be moving forward in the North American Championship division or taking on 
somebody like a Damien Priest, but he if he processes through this and then goes on to that, there's some progress there. We could have a story. It's all good. Tegan Knox versus Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel Gonzalez just beats the ever loving. I, I have notes, but I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna sort of shorten it down a little bit because I I have I don't believe how long I've already been rambling. Basically, Gonzalez beats the fuck out of her for a long time. Knox tries to get a comeback with a couple chops or whatever. Kai's in the, uh, at the side, of course, hits her with a cheap shot when the referee's not looking. Shotzi Blackheart, my girl, Shotzi Blackheart comes down with the horned helmet, beats the crap out of Dakota Kai with the helmet. Off the distraction, Tegan Knox gets a really funny looking roll up on the much bigger Gonzalez and gets the win. And they pose on the rampway. And later on in the night, we find out that it's going to be a tag team match next week. Playa, playa, holla, holla. Now, everybody online was saying if Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart become a tag team, what should their tag team name be? And I submit to you right now, they should be the Ballsy Wizards. Because she's got the shiniest wizard and, you know, my girl Shotzi Blackheart is the, the Ballsy Badass. They did a video package for Keith Lee. Talking about how his, uh, I don't want to make fun of it. WWE does great video packages. You don't need me here to tell you that WWE does great video packages. But basically, it's how he got to WWE. How you know he couldn't get here, he couldn't get there because he wasn't, he w didn't have the right look. He was too big. He couldn't do this or that. But he had a match with Mick Foley. I, I guess I don't really know. But now he come back and now he's a champion and and Roddy Roddy Rob big. Thing. Believe in yourself. That's how you've asked in your own glory. My nose is itchy. Don't look. It's fine. People listening on audio just know that I was scratching my nose. I don't know. Dexter Loomis squashed to Hootie Miles, and I really, really don't care. Uh, Adam Cole from his home cutting another selfie video vignette because the thing on the, on the teaser on WWE.com said that he was going to have a chat with Velveteen Dream, and uh, he's sitting there laughing on his phone saying, did you really think I would be there? Big surprise, I'm not there. You don't deserve a title shot. I'm just protecting everybody's reality. And the reality right now is nobody in NXT and nobody in WWE deserves a shot at this title. And by the way, my boys are going to get some other gold back tonight and we're going to rebuild the the uh, the Undisputed Era. And it's all going to be good. And you think it's going to be Fish and O'Reilly, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, Velveteen Dream comes out. They had a podium for some reason, set up at the top of the rampway rather than making the promos from the ring. I don't know what the reason for that is, but it was kind of cool. It was a little bit different. Just comes out, and you could tell he was really... All, I like Velveteen Dream. I really do. I want to see him succeed. I'm, I'm sorry that he was injured for so long, but he was really awkward with no crowd, man, like... And you could see it. But he basically says, typical Adam Cole, you cut that video in the daylight. I know you've had a lot of time on your hands. You could be here if you really wanted to. You think you're a you think you're a mastermind, but you're really just the last champ left in your group. I'll give you some credit. You were the longest running champ ever. Congratulations. But every now and then somebody hears those two magic words, dream over. And he turns to the one side and fucking Finn Balor is just standing there watching him talk. It's kind of great. Finn Balor says, I don't know you. I don't like you. I've never seen you. I've never spoken to you before. But if you want to talk about him being the best NXT champ in ever in the history of the brand or whatever. Um, I'm the best champ this brand has ever seen. You gotta watch out when you make ignorant statements like that or you'll get yourself a date with the prince. And Dream just sort of says, hey, if you, a date with a prince, eh? How about next week? Shuffle, 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 shuffle off. And it was awkward and I don't think anybody, the, the stuff that Cole's doing from home is great because I guess he's had a million takes to do it over and over again. Velveteen Dream was awkward. And the pan over when he was done talking to Finn Balor to just see that Finn Balor had been just watching him talk was weird. But now, that aside, next week we are getting Velveteen Dream versus Finn Balor, which I am all the way here for. So we got that coming up next week. We got Dakota Kai and... Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. That doesn't hurt my feelings either. Malcolm Bivens talks some shit in the back. That's literally all my notes say. And then we get the Undisputed Era represented by Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong, because Kyle O'Reilly is apparently not suitable for competition, versus Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne's chosen replacement for a partner for Matt Riddle, Tim Thatcher, which is great. 
if I knew who the fuck Tim Thatcher was. I don't know. Dude looks tough. Dude looks unimpressed with Riddle's bullshit, but they're a team, and I really, I really don't know what to say. This match went on for a while. It really did, and it just sort of, it found neutral at about 50% of the way through the match, and I hate saying that because I like Matt Riddle. I like Roderick Strong as long as he stays a heel. Bobby Fish is great to watch as well. Uh, you miss something with the Undisputed Era when Kyle O'Reilly's not there. He brings a certain amount of of something to the match. I don't know what to call it, an, an, an exuberance, a charisma, a... Uh, He's almost got a Adam Cole, but a little bit less element to him. I don't know. Plus, everything he does looks like it hurts like a bitch. Randomly, randomly again, they pan over. While this match is going on, much like they did in the Velveteen Dream promo, and they just sort of panned over and Finn Balor was watching him talk, they pan away from the ring, and standing in some weird orange light, Dexter Loomis who looks like he's got dead babies in his basement, is just standing there watching the match and doing his best to convince us that he never blinks. I don't understand it. The match goes on, the match goes... The match gets on to a, a bit of a trudging pace at one point, and then sort of out of nowhere, this Timothy Thatcher guy, who Twitter is blowing up about, so apparently he's another one of those guys that, that only I don't know about. Um, but... He just sort of snaps down one of the Undisputed Era guys into a Fujiwara armbar and gets the win. And now he's a cruiser, or not a cruiserweight, a tag team champion. So we're going to have an interim cruiserweight champion eventually. And we're gonna, and now we have an interim one half of the tag team champion. It's a very, it's cool, I guess. It's different. It's, 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 you know, keeping everybody on their toes. It's giving us something instead of giving us nothing. I uh, I don't like debuting somebody and putting a belt on them right away. We did that with Sheamus. Sheamus put John Cena through a table, and then, you know, that went from there. But I, I'm going to say something here, and people are going to tell me I'm reading too much into it, but whatever. On the day you fired Deanna Perrazzo... You had a debuting superstar win a title with the Fujiwara armbar. Bad move. Bad move. And I say that, and I and I and I got to reiterate, and I say that a lot. I love NXT. Uh, I love NXT more than Raw, more than SmackDown, more than Impact, more than AEW. That's why NXT reviews are the flagpole of this channel. But it means I have to hold them to a higher standard. If this happened on Raw or SmackDown, I would just say, well, that's kind of dumb and ignorant. I have to call them out uh, because I do hold them to that higher standard. This was a shitty move. I don't care if that's his finisher. I really don't. You could have just had Matt Riddle get the pin or something like that. But you literally brought in a new guy the same day you let Deanna Perrazzo go. Gave that brand new guy a title with what it was essentially her finishing maneuver. Now... As I say, everybody's going to tell me I'm looking too much into that. I think that was in that was really poor planning and really bad taste, in my personal opinion. And then, as promised, at the end of the night, we're going to hear from Ciampa. And Ciampa doesn't come to the ring either. He's set himself up a little cell phone promo area in the back. What looked like it was in the gorilla position, so he looked like he was almost at the ring. And he just said, you know, I'm done with all this bullshit. I'm done with Gargano. I'm done with Candice. I'm done with all of it. We said before we had this match that this was going to be it. Whoever would win would win. So congrats. You're the better man. You showed you and Candace both showed the world who you really are. And then he gets attacked, but you don't see who. He gets grabbed up, and then the camera falls over, and all you hear is grunting and groaning and noise. And then you see Ciampa on the ground, and you see a pair of black boots, which I'm assuming are Scarlet Bordeaux's, and you see a head next to Ciampa's head, which... I still don't know, guys. You guys have to tell me down in the box below. Was that Killer Cross? Was that Killer Cross debuting in the parking lot last week after somebody else's match and in the gorilla position on somebody's cell phone this week? I I don't know. Because if, if we debuted Timothy Thatcher and Killer Cross both on these shows, neither one of them very effective, in my opinion. I hate saying that. You guys know I do. Um... 
as I say, I'm th I'm thankful for the distraction that wrestling is going to give me for as long as it gives it to me. And NXT is at the top of the wrestling mountain for me. But if they give me some disappointing shit, they gave me three guys that I really like and one guy that I was just getting to know in a tag team main event that dragged at the end. That's why you'll see I haven't even gone through my notes other than mentioning the weird ass Dexter Loomis thing, which has no. I, I got nothing. I got nothing, and I'm giving myself a pass here. I uh, I do not feel compelled to push and feign excitement because it's a weird day. Uh, there was some good shit on here. I, I'm not gonna lie. The setup for Dream versus Balor is there. We started the Cruiserweight Championship tournament, which is really cool. Um, my girl Shotzi got some spotlight. That's cool. We're going to talk about next week. Next week, we have that tag team match, which is Kai and Gonzalez versus Knox and Shotzi. We have Dream versus Balor. And we have three more matches in the Cruiserweight champ in the room. Cruiserweight Championship Round Robin Tournament. There we go. We have to find a shorter way to say all that. But we're getting Kushida versus Tony Nese and his tiny knees. You got Drake Maverick, who doesn't have a job after these three matches. Go watch his thing it's really sad versus jake atlas and i don't know who the fuck jake atlas is somebody help me down in the box below and then we got el hero del fantasma who i also don't know who he is they gave us a video package on him tonight that was in another language that's not a catch-all that's not a catch-all it's I, it's not going to make me care about the bivens boys it's not going to make me care about el hero del fantasma it doesn't mean that oscar is a good promo cutter she just means she's a japanese vicky guerrero and he's taking on Gallagher, and all they said about Gallagher was he's coming back to NXT, tattoos and all. You know what Gallagher did in the Cruiserweight Classic? He tied people up and kicked them in the butt. And I can't help but think that that's going to happen next week. I, I really don't know. I'm really dripping with negativity on this, and I, I shouldn't be because there's some good shit, but the world's fucking weird. And a bunch of fucking people just lost their job and none of us can do anything and we're all trapped in our houses and the one thing that's meant to help us escape has no audience <sighs> I don't fucking know go back two days and watch me and Kristen talk about Godzilla because it makes more sense than the world around us right now I've been Spaz your Wild WC reality check subscribe up there talk down there start a conversation keep all these conversations going don't be a stranger I'll talk to you tonight the last one of you later but for right now Tagging out, guys. Hope you guys are doing okay. Bye.